Welcome investors and traders to Bar Chart's weekly webinar series. We're dedicated to empowering you with valuable insights into various trading concepts and providing you with the tools and knowledge needed to make informed investment decisions. Today, we'll dive into the fascinating world of unusual options activity, exploring how Bar Chart's innovative approach can uncover hidden opportunities and potential big price movements. At Bar Chart, we believe in simplicity and effectiveness, and our unusual options page is designed around a straightforward idea. Screen for large volumes and specific strike options, compare them to previous days' low open interest in those same strikes. By doing so, we can identify smart money, institutional players, big bets, and the potential significant price movements they could represent. Hello everyone, my name is John Rowland, Bar Chart Senior Market Strategy, and the unusual options serves as a powerful indicator, offering in a glimpse into the minds of our market's most experienced players. And it's an opportunity to tap into their strategies and potentially ride the wave of their successful trades. Now, during this webinar, I will guide you through the process of interpreting and acting upon unusual options activity using Bar Chart's cutting edge tools and our new resource of time and sales. You'll learn how to recognize significant volume surges and decipher the implications of different types of option strategy activities. Now, armed with this knowledge, you could make those informed trading decisions that will align with the market's smart money. Now, by the end of this webinar, you should have a comprehensive understanding how to leverage Bar Chart's unusual options page and incorporate it into your trading toolkit. Now, you will be equipped with the skills to navigate the market with the confidence and seize upon opportunities that others may have overlooked. Now, before we get to that, uh please welcome my partner and our moderator bar charts project director gene baker hello gene hi john hi everybody out there it's kind of good to be back in the uh, swing of doing our wednesday sessions it it is good it is good it's not it's nice to have a little time off every once in a while but um it's good to be back to work so i agree with you 100 percent. right so gene i know that i've said this to you before um this is one of our most popular pages, isn't it? Yes, unusual options activity. I think uh, there's a lot of interest about options nowadays, and whenever anything is a little unusual, it's kind of worth taking a look at. So <laughs> you're gonna help us through that today. So I hope you're not saying that I'm unusual, but uh, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the stuff that we're gonna look at today can be unusual at times, and it, deserves a second look. For sure, for sure. All right, you ready to get started, Gene? Absolutely, let's go. Okay, so to remember today uh, is for educational purposes only and decisions to buy, sell, or hold, or trade securities, commodities, or other investments involve risk, and are best made on the advice of a qualified financial professional. Now, options trading is not for everyone and can result in the loss of principal. So it's important that you understand how options work and the strategies that uh, rel re uh, rely on them. Now, under no circumstances uh, shall we be liable for any loss or damages that you occur or anyone else incurs as a result of trading activity that you or anyone else engages in based on the information or material you receive through barchart.com and our services. Okay, so that's our little business. All right, so, Today's session, what I want to kind of do for today's session is I want to try to achieve two goals. And the first goal is to demonstrate how to use and decipher the information contained in the unusual options page and help you to navigate the site to, you know, discover these unusual trades and also to decipher basically what might be just a usual part of business of some of these large institutional money managers. And then the second goal that I wanna to try to achieve this week 
in this webinar is to show you what trading strategies these institutional traders are employing and how we can ride their coattails or take advantage of their outlooks or do nothing except understanding the complex option strategy that they're using. So here I am on the uh, unusual options activity page. If you don't know where to find it, it's under options, and then you can see unusual options activity page. So let's just talk about a couple things to start off first of all. As a, uh, a free member or a um, general public user of bar chart, you have access to this, this page. Only uh, premier members will have access to some of the filters and some of the layers of, that I'm going to demonstrate um, through out this session. The other thing that I wanted to point out as visitors to our website that you can receive this free uh, newsletter, which will give you some information about unusual activities. And it might be very spe specific about one unusual activity, but it's something that is free that you can sign up. And regardless if you're a premier member or uh, a subscribed member or just part of the general uh, public, all right? The other point that I wanna talk about is some of the benefits of being a premier member and one of the benefits is that we can receive an email uh, that is sent to us that gives us this front page now regular uh, subscribers can get an end of the day report but premier members will get be able to get a midday report now why is that important to understand because a midday email report that usually gets it around sometime after uh, I'm on the East Coast. So it's usually sometime around 1230, closer to one o'clock. Um, that information is will allow you to take some actionable trades. In other words, trades that are being occurring today, where um, the end of the day email, you might see something that's interesting, but the opportunity may have already passed because of that that happen in today's trading action. So those are some benefits and some differentials I wanted to just point out. Now the page itself here is laid out or arranged by volume versus uh, open interest, which is right here. And that is a ratio. And basically what we're doing here is we're looking for high volumes compared to uh, open interest obviously lower open interests and that would give us a higher um, ratio and that's how this page is arranged but let's go through some of the categories here in columns as we work through this page now let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can all see it so first of all you have your symbol and that's the symbol of the underlying equity now notice that we do also have an unusual options for ETFs and indices. Now, if you click on the plus button here, you will have an opportunity to go right to the symbol itself and you can get a chart. Um, you can uh, see some quotes on it, performance, uh, if there's any news, some technical analysis, um, you know, some key stats ratios, you know, per share information. Sometimes this is a great place to come quickly to see when the most uh, recent earnings is or when the last earnings was and then if you don't understand don't know what the stock is or the company represents you know you get a little uh, little reader's digest description of the security or the symbol that we're looking at what is the price what is the most recent price the security traded at what is the type of option that this unusual option is in this case a call then uh, we have what is the strike price of that unusual options. Now notice that some of the strike prices here are in red and some of them are in green. And if you look up here, you can see that it says that when the last price is above the ask or at the ask price, uh, strike price, then this is highlighted in green. This might be an indication that somebody is reaching up buying the offer or buying that option. And when the last price is at or below the bid, then the strike price is highlighted 
uh, in red. Now, that is a great resource for us to quickly look at it, but it's not always generally the case. Sometimes, you know, you could see the stock price move and that will have an effect on the option price. So we're going to look at how we can determine actually if somebody is buying or purchasing an option or selling it. But it is a quick reference to way to uh, look at that information. When is the expiration date of the option? How many days to expiration? Now let's talk about days to expiration. Now, recently, well, I say in the last year or so, there's been a lot of interest in what we call zero DTEs or uh, options of that are very short dated, a couple of days, two days, three days, one day, you know, zero days. Now, this is really about uh, a little bit more spe speculative trading using options on an intraday basis. So, you know, again, if I sort this, I can sort any of these columns. You can notice here that we have a lot of two-day options. These are ones that are probably expiring on Friday. So, you know, there will be some unusual options based on volume and our open interest. But again, again, if I can just give you a little bit of advice on this one is if you're going to trade some of these zero DTs or these short-term um options was very low days to expiration you know a lot of them you're going to see are very close to the strike price is very close to current price somewhere around one and two percent those are probably those are being used in day trading options if you're going to use this then you know maybe start looking for those options where uh the strike price is a larger percentage away from the current price, I would say something like 5% or greater, that would give you an opportunity to look at something that might be um, unusual. Now, I'm just kind of scanning through here. I don't see anything that really jumps out at me to give you a good example of, of that. Um, the other thing that we could also look at is make sure if you're looking at these one or two day options that you know you look for those that have some very significant volume. We'll look, we're going to talk about how we look at volume. And you can see that if I just scroll down here, there's not a lot. Um, you know, maybe some of these down here, we could find something that is interesting. So that's just a little bit of advice. I'm not saying that you can't trade these, these shorter term ones. Just, you know, be careful what you're doing and make sure you understand. You know, let's kind of look in that, um, um, you know, two weeks 20 days 30 days 60 days maybe 90 days i think those are the where you're going to find some great greater opportunities all right the next three are our bid our midpoint and our ask and again we'll look at what bid and ask represents in terms of our strategies the midpoint is just the you know right in the middle of the bid and ask now when we look at if someone is purchasing or selling what we might determine is if we could see a trade that is above the midpoint towards the ask that might be leaning towards somebody who is purchasing the options and if we see the last price is somewhere between the midpoint and the bid that might be an, uh, an example of somebody who is uh, selling the option now if we're looking at this one right off the bat you can see the last price was 255 that's the bid that is an indication that somebody is probably selling to the bid. In other words, it's a sale of this particular option. Not necessarily, but that is how we can start to interpret that. When we look at times of sales, that'll give us a, we'll see a lot clearer picture when we look at that. Volume, again, volume, how much volume um, the option has traded today. Uh, the open interest, the previous day's open interest. If you don't know what open interest is, those are contracts that have been opened and have yet to be closed. What we want to find is a large amount of volume in a, in a strike that has very low open interest. Now, sometimes what we might see is large volumes in strike prices that have already established open interest, and they could be part of an unusual options trade we're going to the way this page is designed we're going to concentrate on that volume to open interest ratio and there you can see that ratio in this example is 97 uh, 
a ratio of 97 to one. Uh, again, the greater the ratio, the maybe the more significant. And then a couple other little features here is implied volatility. Um, as far as trading concern for this page, you know, applied volatility may give me an idea of what type of strategy I might use. You know, maybe low volatilities, I'll be more inclined to look at those are purchasing options and high volatility, maybe looking for ones that are selling or collecting uh, premium. And then the delta of the option. Again, when we start looking at some of these strategies, you know, we might be looking at strategies that are in the money, out of the money, or at the money, and this is where we can kind of get that quick snapshot um, in terms of our delta. All right, so this is really kind of where we're gonna start our investigative, investigative process. We're gonna first compare today's volume of a particular options with the daily option volume average for that particular security. Then what we'll do is we're going to look at puts and calls of similar and nearby strikes and um, across uh, different uh, times to expirations. Uh, we'll look for some clues in our put call ratios. Um, if a trader is buying puts or calls, and how does that line up with what is the consensus of the market? That could be an indication that they're tipping their hand. In other words, uh, is it with the market sentiment or the trend bias of this particular asset? Now, where does volume compare to the big picture too? You know, total volumes and total open interest, and that will be significant as well. And finally, we're going to look at times and sales to help us discover if our option activity of our institutional trader is what I would say um, initiating a purchase or a sale. Okay. So that being said, let's see if we can go through the process. So I wanted to go through one of these off of the page from today. And I was looking at a lot of these this morning. Some of them have changed and some of them have popped up in the last few minutes. But the one that came to me this morning, which was at the top of the page, was this one, KSS, which is Kohl's. And let's kind of walk through this one together. Okay, so the current price on Kohl's is trading $20.40. The unusual option was a call and the strike was $22.50. So this is an out of the money call. If somebody is either purchasing or selling this call that is out of the money. The expiration date is June 16th. No, not too far away, only about 30 days away. The bid ask in this case here looks like it's 81 cents versus 84 cents and the last trade on um, this option was at 83 cents. You know, and the, if we look at the difference between the bid and the ask, a little bit closer to the ask, maybe an indication that somebody is buying. And the volume here is 13,675 versus an open inches, a previous open inches of 1,180. So it's a very significant amount of volume compared to a previous day's open inches. And that's a sign to us that somebody is initiating are opening a position because the open interest is not there based on the comparison to the volume. So at this point now, what I wanna do is, first of all, I can go to the details and there it is popped up right on top. And again, same information we just saw um, on the main page. Now, what I might do here is take a moment and step back and do that volume and put call analysis. Um, and so first I'm gonna to go to the stock overview page and I'm gonna scroll down here from the stock overview page to the options overview. And this is where we can kind of do that analysis. So for instance, today's volume of all the options on Kohl's is 19,000. 
Now that unusual option that we just saw was around 13,000. So a large portion of today's volume is uh, inside of that one option trade. Now our 30 day options volume for this particular security is 11,500. So that one trade again is greater than the 30 day average and that's significant. And that is something that would be unusual for us. Now, in some of our more heavily traded options markets, for instance, let's say some of the mega caps, um, Microsoft, Avidia, um, Apple, you know, you, you might not see this kind of distortion, right? You might have to look or temper or tailor your analysis. You know, if you see, you know, a 5% or 10% a volume in an, an option that has low open interest, that would be significant in a very heavily traded uh, option security. Um, again, then we could also start looking at um, this trade in terms of open interest. Now, here we see that our 30 day average open interest is 147,000. Again, the trade itself, the unusual options trade itself was 13,000 contracts. So again, you know, in terms of a ratio here on the bigger picture, it's only about, you know, just under 10%. But I think when you start seeing 5% or greater, then that could be significant. Now, if you're looking at a lightly traded option and the trade itself is greater than the open interest over the 30 days, average, then that would be a lot more uh, significant. All right, so now we've kind of done this process. Now, one of the things we'll do is I will look at this put call open interest ratio, which is right here. And that will give me kind of a, um, a sentiment to where the market looks at this stock. In other words, is the market bearish based on options or bullish based on options? And this put call ratio is one way we can do that in determination. Now, the general rule is in a normal market, there's usually more calls are traded than puts. And that put call ratio usually falls somewhere between 0.4 and 0.6. When it starts to get above 0.7, it's starting to get a little bit more heavier towards puts. And anything at one or above, is really kind of a bearish sediment. So we can see here we're at 0.97. That is kind of telling us there's an equal amount of puts and calls trading, and that this particular stock, there is a bearish sediment to, to it. Now, from this point here, what I'm going to do is, you know, I can go back to my unusual options activity. Now we're in calls, and there's that trade there. But what I wanna do is look at this in terms of the big picture. And this is, again, this is our process. And I wanna see if this options activity is unique to you know, one strike or is it part of maybe multiple strikes or multiple expirations? And this is one, one way I can do this very quickly. So you can see that today's volume, this 13,000 is inside of this one expiration date and all the other expiration dates that we ha can have to trade, there's not a lot of volume. So we know that there's not a roll going on here as they're moving from one expiration to another expiration. If I go inside of that expiration itself, again, we can see that there is, you know, some established open interest in some puts, but no volume today. Some established open interest in some of the calls, but again, not a lot of volume. The volumes is mostly in this one particular strike, this 13,000. So now we've really identified that this is uh, unique and maybe unusual. Now, again, what did we say about the put call ratio in the big picture? So for this particular expiration, the June 16th expiration, we can see that our put call open interest ratio is 1.28. In other words, again, another bearish indication on this stock, our bearish settlement. But what are we seeing today? We're seeing call options activity and our put 
call volume ratio for today is 0 0.03. In other words, it's literally all calls and no puts. So is that unusual? Well, yeah, because sentiment is still bearish and here we're seeing some call uh, purchasing or call trading. So that could be a clue to us that this could be something um, more significant. Now, from this point here, what I can do is if I go to the left here, there is something called these three dots are links, and these are the links that are established to the calls. Now, some of you, um, before I move away from this, you notice that I do have my calls and my puts lined up side by side, and there is a way that you can stack these based on how you prefer to see them, but I kind of like to see them stacked side by side. So I'm gonna go to the links here, and under the links here, you know, we can go back to some of those areas where I already just previously showed you, but I want to go to time and sales. And this is going to give me that information that would allow me to see if um, somebody is purchasing or selling. So you get a snapshot here and you can look very quickly in terms of where the transactions are occurring and look for, you know, you can scroll up and down and look for um, you know, some block pieces. But I, what I like to do is I like to open up the big page on this and just make sure that I'm not the right one. I'm looking at a calls, I'm looking at the right expiration, I'm looking at the right strike. And, you know, this is happening today. And I can adjust these according to if they, I want to go back in history. And then I'm going to open up prices. And what I really kind of want to do is I want to look at where are the transactions occurring between the bid and the ask and the trade sizes. Now notice that there is a lot of little pieces, but if I scroll down here just a little bit farther, there is one large piece where we saw 4,200 contracts traded, options traded in one block. And this is very significant, right? This is really showing us what this unusual options trader is doing one big piece now there's a lot of little pieces it could be retail traders could be the same trader adding to their position but one big large piece very significant and if we look at the bid ask the bid here is 58 cents the ask is 67 cents and the trade was at 67 cents so this is a confirmation to us that this large block somebody came in and bought the offer got a large piece of volume off and then it's telling us that somebody is buying these particular calls. And that I think was, will be a little bit more significant, especially if we consider what is going on with calls in terms of market sentiment. And we'll come back on this uh, a little bit later and maybe we can de decipher this in terms of a trading uh, opportunity. So that's kind of our process. How we can go through the unusual options page, look at volume and look at open interest, and then to determine, you know, what our traders are doing. All right. So what I want to do now is kind of go through some examples from previous days and walk you through, again, walk you through some of this process, but also to help you kind of get inside the mind of some of our traders. Now, remember when I talked about that newsletter, excuse me, not the newsletter, the end of the day and the midday email that you can receive? Well, this is a screenshot of the email that I get. Um, this happens from the midday price quotes from Monday, May 15th of the unusual options. And this is why I'm really a big fan of, um, you know, part of the premier package, but a big fan of this is, you know, one of the benefits of being a premier member. So here's a trade that I've highlighted. This is in Meta. And then you can see the price of the Meta at the, at the time of this was 239.27. It was a call. The strike was at $200. Uh, again, if we think about this in terms of where current price is and where the strike price is, well, the strike is in the money. It's below current price since it's a call. And the expiration date is August 18th. It's 95 days to expiration. And we look at the bid ask here, we can see that the bid was 46.80, the ask was 47.50, the midpoint 
was 47.15. Now the last trade uh, at the time when this email was sent was at 47.15. Not necessarily the price of our unusual options. That's where we're gonna do that due diligence. But the volume so far in Meta on this day was 80, excuse me, 48,000 contract. Very significant amount of volume, especially if we look at it compared to um, open interest. Now, if we go to Meta itself, and we look, we do our, you know, our due diligence, we can see that, you know, Meta trades on a daily basis, you know, about 400,000 contracts. So what we're talking about here is one trade that represents 10% of the daily volume. You know, again, this is more a more heavily traded option or a security. So that would be kind of significance. In terms of open interest, right, you know, we've got 3 million open interest, you know, very insignificant amount of open interest. Now, well, there's gonna be some reasons why this one really sticks out as an unusual trade. Now, the first is that it was deep in the money. In other words, um, you know, the call at $200 is, you know, $35, $40 away from current price. Now, why would a large institutional trader buy a call or sell a call, maybe, but buy a call that is so far out of the money? Well, what happens is, excuse me, so far in the money, what happens is that the deeper you get into the money, the option starts to act or have the characteristics of the security um, itself. So let's go back to our unusual options activity. And what I wanna do is I wanna go back in time and I'm gonna look at that historical date and that date was on the 15th. And there you can see that it jumps right to the top of the page. Now, what is the delta on this trade? Well, the delta on this trade is 83. And what the delta is telling us is how much does this option change with every dollar price of our security? So you can see that for every dollar price change in Meta, this option is going to change by 83 cents. So it's acting more like the stock. Now, why would this trader do that? Well, if we think about this trade in terms of a dollar value, when we start adding up the pieces on this one, it starts to make a lot of sense. And not only does it make it a lot of sense, but what it's gonna make this trade unusual is the volume, but the size of the bet. So let's walk through that. So first of all, let's go to our links and we're going to go back to our time and sales. And we're going to look at calls. We got the expiration date. Here's our strike and here's our date. And let's show our prices. And there's our trade, 40,000, 48,000. So let's look at this. Our bid at the time was 46.30. Our ask was at 48.30. And the trade that occurred was 47.50. Well, if we think about the middle of a $2 spread, that would be 47.30. So this trade was 20 cents above the bid point, which probably is telling us that a, our trader was purchasing these options. Now, let's talk about the value of this trade. So they paid $47.50 for each one of these trades, these contracts. They bought 48,000 contracts. Now, if I did my math right, that costs about $228 million. That is what makes this trade very uh, unusual. Now, over here, we do see something new, and this is something called the trade conditions. 
And they're all, there's different um, nomenclatures for them. So this one represents a single action, non-traction that was executed on an electronic order that was stopped at a price or traded in two-sided auction mechanism through a exposure period. In other words, somebody put in the trade that two parties agreed to, and it was done through the ele electronically, and it was uh, the trade was executed. The keys to here is it's a single leg um, auction. In other words, it's not related to any other options. It's not related to any other strikes. It's not related to any other expirations in terms of a spread or a roll. So that's what could make this even more significant. So the cost was about a quarter of a billion dollars, $228 million. And uh, this trader here, if we think about the trade, is 48,000 options. Well, they're taking control of 4.8 million shares, a significant amount. Now, what makes this interesting is, is this a good execution of capital? Right? They're taking control of 4.8 million shares. Now, let's go to the stock itself and look at the chart. And here is the chart of Meta. And our trader was buying $200 calls at $47.50. So their break even is $247.50. So all they need is the stock to get above $47.50 for them to start making money. Now, right now, this kind of looks like a good trade so far, right? And if we think about this trader in terms of risk, you know, maybe our trader is saying to us, you know, I feel that the market is going to move higher and that maybe I will risk, you know, in this case, maybe down around 230. The 230 risk or from the time of the trade was executed, you know, was about eight or nine dollars. We said that, you know, the delta on this was 82. So what is 80 percent of you know, $9, $7. So maybe this trader is willing to risk 7 or $8 on this trade for what reward? And I think this is going to make it a very clear to us is, you know, how significant this 247.50 level is in terms of a potential breakout and how significant it was in the past, old resistance, new support, new resistance, old support, and that there's really not a lot of price action for Meta if we do get above this 247. Now imagine this trade, if this trade did run up to a target of you know close to $300, they would make $53 on this trade. Now let's put that into a perspective, that would be a profit of $250 million. On a risk, we said where they were only risking maybe say seven dollars or eight dollars below the 230 mark of a risk of let's say 31 million dollars. So, would you do this trade where you would risk 31 million dollars to make uh, 250 million dollars or an eight to one risk reward ratio? I think every one of us, if we had that kind of money, we'd say, Yeah, we would do this trade. So what can we do as traders? Now, you and I might not be able to afford $4,700 per options contract, right? For just one options contract. So what I might do is uh, knowing that this trader is bullish on this market and thinking that the price is gonna go higher, what I could do is I can kind of ride their coattails and you learn from their example. So here is a vertical call spread that was that I drew up on the same day where I'm gonna buy an in the money call, similar to what we just saw with our institutional trader. And here I'm gonna to look to buy a 235 call. Notice that the price of Meta at the time was around 239, so it's about $4 in. And I know that that break even value of this institutional trader is above 247.50 or close to 250. Again, I'm just being very conservative showing you here. What I can do is buy the 235 for around $22.50, and then I'm gonna sell the 250 around 
and our 15 and what looks like a little bit and then change. And so I'm gonna cost me only $7 per contract on this spread. That's only $700 per share, a lot cheaper than our 4,700 that we saw our uh, institutional trader. Now, if this trader is right and the stock does go up to above 250, then I'm gonna make seven, uh, $7 and 50 cents or $7 and I think it was around 85 cents on this trade. Now it's a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. If in the worst case scenario, if price goes below 235. But I think you could think in this in terms of this, again, I'm just kind of showing you a conservative approach. You know, could you use a higher strike price? You know, maybe let's say a 260 or 270. Yeah, but then the cost becomes a lot more. So a very easy way to drive the coattails of our institutional, institutional traders based on what the institutional trader believes. And because this is such a big bet, you know, we're just trying to capture a small piece of it. Now we could do di multiple different types of call spreads where we're buying a call that is above the 250 and then selling the one that's closer to the target price. But again, what we're just trying to do is we're just betting on where this trader thinks price is going to get above. And that price we looked at was the break even price. Okay. So that was a good example of writing the coattails of our traders. All right. So here's uh, the next step. What I want to do is I kind of help you deciphering this purchase sales. We just did that with Meta. And so here we see uh, STNE, and this was on Wednesday, May. So what I'm going to do here is let's go to that. All right, so let's go back to our unusual options activity. Now remember, this was on May 10th, so I have to change my date to the 10th. And there it is. So here we see STN. Um, the current price was 1340. It was a put. It was a $12 put. Uh, the expiration date was June 16th, 36 days to expiration. And the volume was around 7,800 contracts and a previous open interest of 166. If we go to um, our stock and we look at our comparison right the average 30-day volume for this trade this security is only 5,000 and this trade happens to be 7,000 so is that significant yeah I think that is very significant in terms of that one trade is greater than the 30-day open interest now in terms of total open interest and uh, this trade you know, it's about 5%, a little bit less than 5% of the total open interest. We go to our put call ratio. You know, again, this is days later. Uh, what I'm kind of looking at here is the overall, the overall put call ratio is a bullish, right? This is a bullish scenario. And the option that we were looking at, the June 16th expiration, if we look at that, overall put call ratio notice what we see it becomes very bearish so this is kind of an indication that the market has a bullish sentiment but this institutional trader is very concerned about the next 30 days in this particular uh, stock now why would that be well look what happens today today after the close this stock is going to announce its earnings and this options trade happened on the 10th, a week before our earnings. So I think what we can start assuming on this one is our trader is thinking that they might be long. I'm thinking that they're long and this is they're just buying some insurance. Now, here I am in this expiration and we are looking at today's uh, chart. But I wanted to show you that now notice that the open interest in this particular strike is now over 7,000 contracts. When the trade happened, it was only 166. So that is telling us that 
the purchase of those options became open interest or the sale of those options became open interest. Now, what we can do is go into that option and look at our time and sales. And now I'm gonna to have to make those changes, right? So the expiration date is the same, it's the 12, but I'm gonna to have to change the date to the 10th. And here is what happened on the 10th. Again, what I kind of want to do is I want to look for some large blocks, you know, and I'd see a few large block pieces here, but let's walk through this together. So the market opened up, the bid ask was both 60 cents at 60 cents. Can't really get an indication there, just knowing that the market had come to equilibrium in terms of buyers and sellers, but notice that as the day goes on, right? The price of the option goes up and the trades are happening on the ass. So what is that telling us? That a trader is buying these puts. Again, what I thought was that somebody was buying puts in terms of an insurance policy. Now, if we go to our chart, What makes $12 uh, unique or significant, right? Again, this stock has had a bullish bias throughout all the other options, except for that one particular monthly strike. And you can see that $12 is a very significant level. It was a major level of resistance at multiple times. And then when the market broke out, you know, now it's acting like a springboard. So I think in this terms, in this unusual options, is there a trade for us to do? Mm, I, I don't think there really is. I think this is just an understanding of a large institutional trader who is hedging uh, by using puts, buying puts to protect themselves on an earnings date to um, $12. Now, could we look at this in terms of an options trade where we could sell uh, maybe a, a credit spread, maybe? Um, or purchase on a credit spread. Uh, yes, I think you could probably do this. Um, but what would I do? Well, maybe what I could do is if the volatility, implied volatility in this one was extremely high, as this trader was buying put protection, maybe what we could do is sell them the $12 put and then maybe buy an $11 put as um, a trade. Now, I look at this and I don't think our um screener was coming up and first of all let's see let's go to that june 16th and we would be looking at a bull put i don't think a screener gives us a good um option here but let's look at prices and we know what the price that they paid, right? They paid 65, 70 cents. Now, yeah, it has, as of today, that option has decreased in value. That's why I was kind of saying, you know, maybe play for a um, an earnings uh, crash, right? A crunch. And maybe we could have done something with, you know, selling the 12 and buying the 11 and try to capture, um, you know, that vol crush after options um, you know, earnings expiration. Now let's go to price history and look at the 11. And I think that was the 10th we had talked about seeing. There was no, really no action here and there's no trade, but you know, the two previous days, it was around 30 cents. So we could have bought these around 30 cents, sold them around 65 cents, 70 cents, captured about 30 cents, 35 cents on a dollar risk. You know, for a credit spread, that's not too bad, a three to one or one to three. So that might have been a trade you could have done. I think this one is just kind of it was a watch and see. All right, here is um, an unusual options activity. Um, again, a midday price from May 15th. And this was Monday. And this one is really easy to read. I don't think we need to go deep into the analysis part, this is what we call a calendar spread and typically traders do calendar spreads. 
sell the short dated expiration and buy the long dated expiration. So you can see here we have Airbnb, here's our current price. They're both calls, same strike price, just two different expirations, a June 2nd versus a June 9th, right? So the assumption is that they sold the June 2nd to raise premium or raise capital and use that to offset the price of the June 9th options. Notice that the volume is almost identical. That would be a very significant um, confirmation. And so what is this trader doing? Well, they're buying the, the June 9, selling the June 12s, and looks like, uh, based on what we see on this information, this looks like it's around 50 cents. They're paying about $1.25. And they're selling is around somewhere between 72 and 75 cents. So here's Airbnb. Again, we doing that analysis in terms of our options, right? Um, two, two legs that represented 15,000 volume on an average daily volume of 70,000. So we're talking about 20% of the daily volume. Um, what's our put call ratio here? Um, you know, notice our put call ratio here is one. So again, this is uh, the sentiment on this market has been bearish, but what we're looking at was a call spread, right? Somebody is taking a bullish stance. Let's go to our times and sales. And again, I have to change the uh, expiration. Let's look at the uh, June 2nd, we said it was the 115s, and the date was on Monday. Let me look at that. And let's look for big block pieces. And what do we see here? Wow, a series of 100 lot pieces. That is very significant. That is telling us that institutional traders, right? Doing 100 lot blocks at a time. Boom, 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 boom. Now, where's our bid ask? 74.79, where are we trading? On the lower end of the bid ask, are we selling, right? Now look under our trade condition. Remember we sold before where we said it was a single action? Well, this one is telling us this is a multi-leg. In other words, this is part of a spread. So in this case, the June 2nd looks like they're selling one leg of a spread. Well, let's go up and see what happens on the June 9th. That change of strike, 115, and the 15th of the date. And notice this, 100 lock blocks, boom, 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 boom. Transaction price, 125, bid S, 119, 127. So what do we see here? What we see is a trader who is buying at 125, selling at, at 75, or they're buying the, basically buying this spread at 50 cents. Let's go back to our stock. Remember there, what they want is that stock option to the shorter dated one to expire worthless. And they want the longer dated one to uh, make them money. So $1.15 plus that 50 cents that we put out, how much we cost, that makes our break even at 115.50. I think this is very uni unique in terms of an unusual trade is because notice that the 115.50 is the top of this gap where you know price of Airbnb has been has been trading in around for a long period of time. And there's a gap above it, looks like a gap fill up to around 125, 126. So think about it, if this trader is right between now and the second and it doesn't get above 115 and that first shorted day date option expires worthless and then we go above 115, this trader is gonna do really well. Now, what I like about this one, remember the uh, overall put call ratio and this one was bearish, right? A lot of put, activity well you know our rsi has turned which you know it's not oversold but it's certainly a sign that maybe we have a bit of a correction in this so i think 
for a trade, you know, 50 cent risk is, this is really looks to be as a very smart trade. Now let's look at option prices today. There's our 115. Remember they sold them, uh, excuse me, the 115s. Yeah. Yeah, the 12. Okay, so it's around 120-ish. So whether they sold 75. So they're out of money on that one, about 25 cents. Let's look at the two the 09s. And they're trading up about right around two dollars. So what are they making here? They bought this for 50 cents and now it's trading close to what 80 cents? Uh, a little bit more than 80 cents so you know so far looking like a good trade just on a spread basis so as far as uh this unusual trade i think this one we would have just followed their coattails i don't think we would have messed around and trying to figure out a better trade for that all right so one more example i want to show you is an out of the money credit capturing and this is where a trader will look to capture credit on a strike that is out of the money, maybe way out of the money. Now, this one's a little bit hard to see, so I kind of made it as big as I could. But we're looking at our unusual options activity, and this, I believe, was from yesterday. Yes, May 16th. And this was in Texas Instruments, and you can see Texas Instruments was trading 163. And somebody was trading 150 puts with a July 21st expiration, 66 days out. And you can look at the bid ask on this one. Here's our volume, 15,000 contracts, right? So let's go to our unusual, excuse me, our unusual activity historical date yesterday and there it is right one 150 strike put 15,000 volume let's go back to that big picture right the stock only trades about 18,000 volume on a daily basis so one trade representing very close to the average volume for this our put call ratio here is 75, slightly bearish, 0.75. You know, our open interest, you know, again, in terms of a percentage here, about, you know, about Time and sales. Right, we want to look for a big block piece. Bingo, there it is. One piece, one trade, one piece, one block. What's our trade conditions? Single floor trade, single leg floor trade. Institution to institution, a large institutional trader made a trade with a large institutional market, options market maker. They traded it all on one price. What was the price they traded at? 219, what was the bid ask? 219, so what did our institutional trader do? They sold the put. If they sell the put, they're collecting that premium, but that's also telling us that they believe that the price of Texas incident will not get below the dollar uh, one, 50 between now and the expiration date. Let's look at the chart. Now, why would that be significant to our trader? Well, there's our strike price. There's our break even on the, how much they collected. So this trader is basically telling us that this is a floor price that they believe that Texas Instrument will not. Now, do we trade this one? I think we could maybe follow in their footprints, sell the same strike. Uh, hold this trade until 
July, or now that we know that this trader has a bullish bias, maybe we can start looking at this particular stock with a bullish bias. In other words, start looking for very specific uh, options trades that have a bullish slant. But in this case, I think what, what I might do on this one is just follow our trader on this one. Now, the problem on this one that I don't like about this trade is, you know, tying up that capital until July and the premium that I'm going to collect that $2.19 in terms of, you know, uh, if I did this on an annual basis. Let's see if it comes up here. Let's see, 150, right? Yeah. So, you know, what did they get? A dollar, two dollars? And then this one is only showing us a dollar seventy-five. But you know, maybe only about one and a half percent. You know, I kind of I kind of like to get at least one and a half to two percent for every 30 days. And this is about uh 65 days. So I'd probably want to see a little bit more uh premium in this one. But you know, again, large trader, large amount of monies. Um uh, in terms of this trade, I think uh, they're going to make something close to 3.2 million dollars on that. If I did my math right, so you know, better than sharp stick in the eye, I guess. Right. All right. All right. So let me do this, Gene. I know I've gotten a little bit over, but let's answer a couple of these questions here. Okay, John. Before you do that, um, would you just go back to the time and sales page? Even here on, for Texas Instruments, I want to point out to everybody that um, the very top over here where John was putting in the expiration date, you know, you can filter this page by time. We've defaulted uh, for a, a normal trading day, 930 to 1630, but you can also filter by last size. So if you know that you're looking for something you know, really unusual, uh, like if you are looking for something over um, a, a 500 trade, you can filter down uh, the time and sales based on last size as well. Just wanted to point that out, that th these things are configurable. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of ways that we could uh, refine our search. Um, you know, the only problem that may be doing like that, if you know it's a large block, then that would be a great way to look for it. But like we saw in that one example where it was 7,500 contracts and they were doing 100 shares at a time, well, once you discovered that 100 share blocks, what, what Gene's saying is what you could do is then you could filter on just looking at the 100 share blocks and then seeing what our trader is doing, right, Gene, if they're buying or selling, right? Correct, right. Okay, great. Yeah, and as John is reviewing the questions I've passed him, um, let me also point out a few things. Everything that John is showing you today is part of a Bar Chart Premier membership. Uh, Bar Chart Premier opens up all sorts of uh, equity options analysis and screening capabilities along with this new time and sales. Uh, if you are not a Premier member, we do offer a free 30-day trial and it's very easy to sign up. We give you full access for 30 days. Use these tools, try them out and see if you can start picking up some of the same uh, concepts that John was teaching you today. I also do want to point out that uh, today's session is being recorded. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, saying, I got to go back and review this, lots yeah. of good information. So this will uh, be uh, sent out to you via email a little bit later on this afternoon. And you can always find our uh, webinars that have been archived on the webinar archive page and on our YouTube channel, which I think John might have time to show you a little bit later on. Yeah, so I, I have gone a little bit over, but I think this is really important. I think this is one of our more popular pages. I just think there's a lot of great trading opportunities if you learn how to use this correctly. So bear with me here. I'll try to finish up in the next couple of minutes. So I read a lot of your questions and I think I answered most of them. What is a significant volume? We talked about that in terms of a ratio of daily volume. Uh, where did you find previous day open interest? Well, that we give you that information. That's right here. That's the previous day's open interest. Um, uh, 
uh, whether I showed you how to decipher what is a bullish or bearish sentiment and also in terms of, you know, puts and calls, buying puts and calls. And then another question here is, did the trader buy those blocks, those 100 blocks as, as to hide their activity? Yeah, that's very common. There's something called an iceberg. Sometimes they will do that where they'll put in, you know, buy 10,000 shares, but only buy them at 100 lot blocks. It's called an iceberg trade. And the final question, I see a couple other questions, but the ones that I think I got was, what is high volume for a short term or a day trade? Yeah, that one's a tough one. It depends on the, the how ac actively traded, um, you know, uh, some of these uh, short term DTEs are, you know, it would depend on, on the individual stock. But, you know, again, I think you could use that five to 10% rule would be probably a good number. All right, so what I want to do one more time here is quickly is here we're back in our unusual stock options page and I want to go to the screener and just for fun here is, and this is kind of what I do sometimes just to play around with this. I'm going to go into uh, options analysis and I'm going to go to something called moneyness. And what moneyness is, is telling us is how far is the strike price from current price. And what I want to look for is those unusual options that are more than 5% away from current price. Those ones I think are a little bit more unusual. And here I'm going to use, I'm selecting the uh, out of the monies that are five to 25%. And if I do that uh, analysis, right? And then I sort it by volume. Remember, we want to look for some of those high volumes. One of the ones that I popped was here's our calls, right? So here was that trade that I showed you in the beginning where we kind of walked through that process where this trader is looking, saying that they're making a bet that the Kohl's is going to make a 10% move between now and June 16th, right? And that they're buying these 2250 calls, you know, roughly around 70, 75 cents. So what could we do as a trader? Well, you know, let's go to Kohl's. And let's look at our chart, right? That 2250 strike, right? So let's learn from some of our professional traders. Let's let's buy an in the money call right today, right? Around $20 or 20, uh, $21. And we know that this trader is, is, is anticipating that price is gonna get the 2250. That's right, it was a single leg trade. So we could do, uh, a debit spread, a bull call spread. Um, what was, I think the date on that one was June 16th, yes. Um, and let's sort these. So here's a 20, 22.50, right? And it's gonna cost me about just under a dollar. And if this trader is right, we're gonna make a dollar 52 or a return of our money of 155%. See how easy that was? Taking information from our unusual options page, deciphering the trade, making sure that it's a trade that I wanna follow, and then using the other tools that we have available on our page to help us find some trading opportunities. And you know, I think this would might maybe a very easy trade for us to do not going to tie up a lot of money for a long period of time and not a large amount of risk. You know, if I'm wrong, I'm probably going to be wrong relatively quickly. I don't have to wait for, you know, price to fall back below $20. You know, maybe I could say, you know, if this, um, you know, you know, got below $20, that might be my, you know, my stopping out point, but I think this might be a nice little um, trade. And let's see, watch this over the next, you know, two, two weeks. All right. Let's do one more thing and we'll finish up for uh, today. So let's talk about some of our due diligence questions, right? Make sure that we look at our volume compared to our open interest, our daily average volume of our options, and do that big picture analysis of our put call ratio. What is the bias and what... Remember how we look in there to see if there are other options that could be trading, trading that are related to it using a put call ratio page to help discover those other active expirations or strike prices. Is it part of a spread, right? 
What are the details of the trade? For example, is the strike in the money, at the money, or out of the money? When is expiration, right? What is the dollar cost? You know, the bigger the dollar cost, the more significant, the more unusual. You know, that meta trade, right? We're talking about some crazy kind of money. You know, is earnings going to be part or dividends announcement? That will have an effect on all of our options. And I showed you a couple examples of where earnings is definitely going to be part of some of those trades that we just looked at. And finally, using time and sales to determine if our trader is initiating a purchase or a sale. And looking at those trade conditions, remember that column all the way to the right on the trade and sales to confirm if the options were part of a spread, a multi-leg, or a roll, or was it a single leg transaction, right? We can use these as trading ideas, but also what would be more significant probably would be those single leg transactions, okay. So as Gene said, mentioned, we do offer a 30 day pro, uh, trial process for a premium membership. I would definitely try, try for 30 days. You might discover just doing what I showed you today, using the unusual options page, alone will pay for a year's subscription now it's not that significant it's only 16 dollars and 67 cents per month you know one trade would pay for a year subscription but you can try it for 30 days for free all right gene i'm trying to whip through all this <laughs> all right next week our upcoming webinar we're going to go into the futures markets we're going to look at our futures page this is going to be kind of um Bit of an introductory, but I definitely for futures traders. If you're interested in futures trading or you are an active futures trading, I'm going to show you how to maximize bar charts futures page. And we'll look at a lot of different things in um, that session together. All right, Gene, did I forget anything? No, I think you, you've covered an awful lot of information. And one other thing I do want to point out, uh, I've had some very specific questions come through here. So if you didn't get your question answered today, please email support at barchart.com. Uh, there's great staff over here and we'll be happy to assist you that way. Yeah, the, a lot of these guys are all former options traders as well. So you're going to get a, a great response. So, all right. right and one, great... one, more, one more thing I'm going to remind everybody about. Uh, if you are a premier member, we are live with market on close this friday at oh that's right i forgot PM about that. central time right market on close so uh come on back and join us for market on close on friday all right cool thanks gina for reminding me thanks for another great session folks be safe out there the best of health and the good of all trading